So in Reaper 7, we now have animated toolbar buttons. So if we go up here to our toolbar, this one, for example, is used for turning on and off ripple editing. Hit it once, notice the toolbar button is animated. So if I move my item, it moves everything to the right of it as well. Do the same with this one. Notice this moves too. Or if I delete this item, everything over here moves over to fill up that space. And that's how ripple editing works. And if we hit the button again, it switches to ripple editing all tracks. So that'll work the same way with all the tracks at the same time. So if we move this one, everything going forward from it moves with it. Or if we delete this item, it deletes that space on all the tracks. And typically, we're going to use ripple editing and then turn it off when we're done. So that's why the toolbar button is animated. So we can see it very clearly when it's on. So if we accidentally leave it on, and we move our items, and everything going forward moves together, we can see very clearly why that's happening. Because ripple editing is turned on. So we turn it off right here to get back to the default behavior. And in Reaper 7, they've also added two new toolbar buttons. This one to marquee select our items like this by left dragging. It'll select any item within this marquee or within this square. And then usually you'd turn this off and then move those items. So the marquee select is usually used and then turned off when you're done. So again, Reaper animated the button so we can clearly see if we accidentally left this on. So if we go to move our items and it doesn't move them, it just creates this marquee select. And we can quickly see because the toolbar button is animated, we need to turn it off. And the same with razor editing. If we turn it on, we could use razor editing by left dragging like this to create a razor edit area, which we can move or delete, but usually when we're done, we're gonna turn it off. So again, that's the reason it's animated. So you can clearly see that razor editing is turned on and turn it off if we accidentally forget to, to go back to the default behavior with left dragging. But if you don't like that behavior, we could turn off the animation by right-clicking in the toolbar, go to Customize Toolbar, and find the toolbar button we want to turn the animation off for. So for ripple editing, if you want to turn the animation off, just right click it, go down here to highlight with animation based on toggle state, and change it to do not animate. And now, it's still going to work the same way. Click it once. Ripple editing per track mode is on, like this. But you'll notice the toolbar button while it's on, is not animated. Hit it again. For ripple editing all tracks mode, it'll behave that same way. But again, the toolbar button is not animated. And we do the same thing with these two. Go to Customize Toolbar, choose one of these options, right click it, go down here to highlight with animation, and turn it off. Or there's a few other options we could choose from. Instead of animating it when the toggle state is enabled, we could choose to do it when it's disabled. The opposite behavior. Choose this, hit OK. Now with Razor Edit turned off, as we can see right here, this button is animated. Turn it on, and we can see it's turned on, but not animated. Now we can create Razor Edits like this, because Razor Editing is on. So the animation behaves the opposite way. When we turn it off, it's animated. So it's more useful when you want it on the whole time, and every once in a while, you want to turn it off. When it's disabled instead of enabled. And we can change it by going back here and right-clicking, go to Highlight with Animation, and change it back to Animate when it's enabled. But we could also choose in the same section, different types of animation. It defaults to highlight animation, we could change it to armed animation. 
And now, we turn razor editing on, it behaves like this, with a different type of animation called armed. So we could choose this type of animation for any of our toolbars if we want. Or we could also choose slow blink, which looks like this, where the toolbar button blinks slowly from red to green. Turn it off, it looks like this. Turn it on, it looks like this. Getting our attention when we accidentally leave this on. Or we could also choose fast blink, which behaves the same way, but blinks a lot faster. Again, choose the animation you prefer or turn it off if you don't like it. And we could also animate any of the toolbar buttons that already exist that are not animated by default, like this one right here, which locks our items. I have it set up to prevent left right movement. So with locking turned on, I can't move the items left or right because they locked. But if you want to see that this toolbar button was chosen, as it's not as obvious this way, just animate it the same way. Go down here to locking and right click it, go to highlight with animation and choose to animate it when the state is enabled or disabled. We'll choose this one and let's change it to armed animation. And now when it's not locked, I can move my item, but when it is locked, we can't. But if we notice we can't move our items left or right, it becomes more obvious when we see this animated icon, letting us know we locked our items. And we could turn that animation off right from here. And it no longer animates. We could still turn it on and off. Now we could also use this feature if we add new toolbar buttons to the toolbar. So let's right click, customize toolbar. And let's add a new action. I'm going to add a button to hear my mix in mono. Right here, this action is going to toggle the master track to be stereo and mono. Double click it. Now it shows up down here. Let's add a separator to separate it from these. Let's give it its own icon by right clicking. I'm going to choose this one right here. Close it. And now, the toolbar button will look like this and show up up here. So now, if I hear my mix, it's going to play in stereo. I have to fall apart. But if I hit this button, it'll play back in mono. I have to fall apart. Maybe you want to check my mix or different tracks in mono, but I might forget and accidentally leave this on. So to make this toolbar button more obvious, we could animate it. So right click it, go to customize toolbar, go to the action and right click it, go to highlight with animation and animate this button. Let's also use fast blink for the animation for this button. And now with it off, we hear our track in stereo. I have to fall apart. And it looks like this, but if we turn it on, we'll hear our mix in mono. I have to fall apart. And by making the toolbar button blink like this really fast, it's really obvious that I accidentally left this on. As I don't want to hear my mix in mono the whole time, just temporarily sometimes. So as I'm mixing, I have to fall I want to switch back to mono, hit the button. I have to fall apart. And we hear the mix or any tracks we solo in mono. But will we see or know that the project is playing back in mono as this button is blinking in a very obvious way? So it becomes more useful to let us know if we accidentally left that mode on. So that's pretty much it. That's the animated toolbar buttons in Reaper 7. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.
Bingo, boys, let's go.